All right, first of all, I'm sorry for the jank setup. I'm not a huge YouTuber. I don't even have a proper camera at the moment. I'm filming on a GoPro because I've sent off my camera to be appraised. I'm gonna sell it, I'm switching kits. Anyway, I'm sorry for the shitty audio. I'm using an iPhone on my desk to record this. So bear with me. But in this video, I'm gonna be showing you guys how to create this cool vintage uh, melting text look uh, in Fusion. Full disclosure, I did not come up with this effect. I saw it in a YouTube video by MoGraph Mill. They'll be somewhere on the screen. Really great tutorial in After Effects. I've been diving into Fusion a lot lately and without going on a long-winded kind of monologue, I feel that there is a lot of power in Fusion and not a lot of people are harnessing it or really figuring it out because there really isn't a lot out there on how to learn it. And when you get kind of get the idea of nodes, basically everything from After Effects sort of transfers for the most part. So you can, once you get to a certain point, you can look at After Effects tutorials and kind of reverse engineer it in Fusion, which is exactly what I did for this one. And I, it came out great. So we're gonna jump right in and I'm gonna teach you guys how to do this. Before we get started, I do have to say, uh, you will be needing a Reactor. It's a free plugin. Basically, it's kind of a third-party client, like an app store of sorts for different plugins, macros, and other kind of effects that people have made for Fusion. Some are paid, I would say about 95% of them are free. I'm not gonna go into how to install that, it's really simple. There's a link down in the description that takes you to how to install it. It's a great, great thing to have. I use it all the time. And yeah, so you're gonna need to install that before we get started. So to jump in, uh, one last thing to note is that this is a graphically intensive effect. Fusion isn't the most optimized in my personal opinion, so I would recommend having your project timeline resolution to 1080p or lower depending on your computer. That being said, first thing we're gonna wanna do is uh, create a Fusion composition and pop over to the Fusion page. So the first thing we wanna do is create text. This is gonna be what we're gonna be kind of basing our whole um, effect over. So to do that, we're gonna grab a text node and then a merge node and a background node. Now the text node will connect to the foreground of the merge and the background will connect to the background input. And we'll connect that out to media. Out, and we can see where we're working here. Um, now let's create our text. Mine is gonna say vintage AF, cause why not? Um, and I'm gonna input uh, extra old personal use as my font because why not? Okay, so after we have the text, we're gonna need to add some motion to it. That's where the, this whole effect is kind of built off of is the motion of the text or whatever you're adding this to. You can add this to pretty much anything. You might be able to add it to video footage, but for the most part, you're gonna wanna stick to text or shapes. Um, and I can show you guys how to do both of those. Um, but for text, we're gonna wanna add some movement to this. So I'm gonna make sure my playhead is at zero, move my text into a position that I would like, go over to, the, make sure the text node is selected, go to layout, and under the center X and Y, I'm gonna add a keyframe. I'm gonna go forward 20 frames. I'm gonna move my text down. And then I'm gonna go forward another 20 frames, move my text back to the middle. Just type in 0.5. And then, you know, I'll go another 20 frames to 60. And I'll move the text right here. Screw it. Oh my God, what have I done? What have I done? 0.5. So I'm gonna bring this down just so we're not watching nothing here down to 60, so it loops. Actually, no, I'm gonna, I am gonna make this loop. So I'm gonna take this, copy it, go to my 60th keyframe, put this back at 0.5 and paste where the first location was, like that. So this will be a nice loop. Boink, boink, boink. Cool. So right now the keyframing uh, is really dry. It's all linear. So let's go ahead and bring open our spline editor. 
select all of your keyframes and we're gonna go with smooth. And we can kind of adjust these a bit so it's more appealing. Like so. So we got some janky motion, but whatever, this will work for what we need it to do. So now the bulk of the effect. If you've installed Reactor, you're gonna need to install Echo through Reactor. The way to do that is to go to uh, Workspace, Scripts, Reactor, and Open Reactor. It's gonna open its thing. Once Reactor finally opens, you're gonna wanna type in Echo, and it's Echo by Jacob Danell. Jacob, you're dope, because this is a cool effect. I really like it. Once you have that installed, the first thing you're gonna wanna do is add an echo node. So I'm gonna go shift space, type in echo, and choose this one. You're gonna go ahead, hit shift. You gotta put the echo node below the text, not after the merge. So once the echo node is uh, between the text, then we can start farting around with these settings here. Um, now, this is gonna be kind of dependent on your hardware because the more subframes you add, the slower this is gonna get. Um, and it can get pretty slow to where you don't even get playback and it's it's not fun to work with. So for my uh, use, I usually keep the echo frames around five. I'm, you know, 10 is pretty good. This The more echo frames you have, the longer the trail is. And then the subframes kind of fill in these uh, this stepping that you see. So if I increase this, see how it takes forever to load. You lose the stepping, but it takes a lot longer to play. Um, so I would probably leave this, what was it, at zero? Probably put this to six. I'm kind of happy with the length. This isn't too bad. Um, the nth frame, uh, I don't really mess with. I kind of leave it at one. The echo gain, there we go. I was wondering what was happening. So yes, the echo gain kind of is the gain between the start of the echo and the end. Now we want this to fade off. So we're gonna lower this echo gain quite a bit to where it's kind of fading off into darkness. Like so, the gamma gain also works with that too. I really want it to fade pretty heavily. Like so, yeah. That's nice. That's very nice. I like it a lot. Um, now angle and scale, you can get some crazy effects if you change this stuff. A little bit goes a long way. Um, so this stuff also kind of screws with your playback speed, but you can get some crazy stuff if you fart around with it and you have a supercomputer. Um, but for this, I'm not gonna use any of that. Um, now, lastly, blur size will kind of blur the trail to where you don't get the stepping. Um, so there's two ways to remove the stepping. One is with the subframes, which you can mess around with, maybe put it at 10. Um, but the blur size is really neat. I like the effect it gives you, but it increases, it, it blurs the echo as it moves backwards, which is super cool, but it, it makes this effect so unbelievably slow. So use it with caution. I don't use it because I need to, this to play back for me to show you how to do this. I like where this is at right now. I'm happy with this. Uh, one way to get around, I'm actually gonna reduce this so I'll get better playback. One way to get around this stepping here without having to use the blur size is to insert a Gaussian blur after the echo. So just insert a blur, I'll change it to Gaussian, and just lightly blur the effect. Maybe three, no, it's way too much, one, honestly. 1.25, something like that, yeah, that looks nice. So now that we have a nice blur, nice little echo blur tracing behind vintage. We want to add some some color to it. We want to make it look pretty neat and colorful and vintage. So to do that, we're going to add a color, I think it's color gain. That's the one we're going to add. Yep. 
We're gonna throw that one in there. Let's go to a frame where there's some echoes. So this effect is cool because it lets you add different colors depending on the brightness values of the text. So uh, the gain, man, this is taking forever. I'm gonna reduce this just so I can get some playback here, like two. Come on. So I wanna make this kind of a fiery color. So I'm gonna make the gain, which is the brighter part of the image, a little, a little red here. You can kind of see how it's already, you can already get like different colors depending on where you move these sliders. And then for lift, I wouldn't touch that because it changes the black, but for gamma, you can go, there we go. Just kind of fart around, get some fiery colors. Oh, here we go. Yes, go to dark. You can add some kind of blue, blue in there. Ooh, or some green, change the hues, some purples. That looks pretty sick. Yeah, let's live with, let's live with this right here. That looks dope. So now we got some color. Without this, it's just white with it. Now we're gonna need to copy the text and paste the text node because we want the text to be white, but we want the trail to be the color. Right now it's all a color. So we just need to overlay the normal text over this. Uh, the way to do that is get another merge node, make sure that it's going into the background and the text goes into the foreground and it overlays it quite nicely. Now, depending on the settings you messed around with in the color gain node, you can get some kind of leakage here that you might find to be a bit muddy. Um, and you can continue to fart around with the uh, settings here to reduce that, that stuff. Yeah, the pre-divide post multiply kind of brings it back in. Uh, you still get the general color. It's just a little less poppy. So for this, for the sake of this video, I'm gonna leave that checked. It's already looking pretty cool. Um, now I'm gonna go back to the the echo and increase the subframes back up to like 10. So we get the the really smooth. There we go. Yep, that looks cool. We get we still get the smooth uh, trails behind it. Now we can take this one step further. This is basically the bulk of the effect. In order to really sell it as vintage, you gotta add some post-processing. So what I like to do is add uh, some grain, just the normal grain, throw that in there. And you'll notice that it adds this, this nice kind of vintage grain over everything. You can adjust this these settings to whatever you see fit. That looks nice. In addition to that, I'm going to add, uh, what else would make this look pretty vintage? I think just a uh, some glow would be cool. Uh, X Glow is from Reactor. I highly recommend it, although it is pretty slow. I think for this, for the sake of this, let's just use Glow. Throw that in there. All this, it, it <laughs> goes wild off the bat. I'm gonna switch this order of these. Um, let's increase the glow size and turn down the actual amount of the glow because that stuff is hot. That looks pretty good right there. Nice. And then lastly, vintage uh, footage usually has lower white values now. So I'm going to drag on some curves here. Uh, uncheck alpha and just bring everything down just a tad. Use this spline editor here to pump that back up. Just kind of bring it down. Kind of makes it look a little muted. So by the time you're done, you have this sick vintage AF smear, smear melt molten thing. That's really cool. I like it. So real quick, that's the bulk, bulk of this effect. From here, you can go to a bunch of different places and, and modify it. I'm gonna quickly show you guys uh, how to change this from text to using a shape. Um, so I'm gonna quickly disconnect the text nodes. 
Um, and I'm going to put a uh, background node down and an ellipse node. We're gonna use a circle. So we're gonna feed the ellipse into the mask input of the background and then put the background in the input of the echo. Uh, now to change the color of the circle, let's go to the background node and set it to white. Like so. We will also reduce the size of this. So let's put this down to like 0.1. Yeah, like that. And then we're gonna copy these two nodes, paste them again because we want the white overlay. We'll put that in the second merge, just like we did the text. So now the circle, uh, the white circle is over the trail and we do need to animate these things. So we can just for ease, go to the merge. Actually, no, it needs to happen before the echo because everything runs down pipe. So we can add a transform node for the echo, quickly bust out some keyframes, go 20, put it over there, and then go to 40, put it over there, and then go to 60, and put these back to 0.5. No, these back to 0.5. 0.5. There we go. Cool. So we'll copy this transform and put it underneath the white ellipse as well. So the white ellipse follows. And now we have the same effect, just with an ellipse. And you can use any shape here. Uh, you can play around with the colors from the color matrix. Uh, you can play with the scale, the angle, like the rotation of it all, add different post-processing. This is a really cool effect. I wish it played back faster. You can see how slow this is. So that is kind of a drawback of Fusion. That being said, this is, I think is a really sick effect. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I'm sorry if this kind of seemed like rambling. I don't like to just come in with a set lesson. I kind of like to fart around because that's when creating is fun. It's just farting around and playing around and seeing what works. So that being said, if you guys enjoyed this, let me know if there's anything else you guys would like me to break down. I'll try my best. Um, but otherwise, thanks for watching. See ya.